Alright guys, so this is part two of the First Timers Brake Maintenance Series. Uh, I just posted a video about doing brake pads, which went really well. If you haven't checked that out, uh, give it a view because there's some thoughts in the beginning about, um, you know, first timers doing any kind of maintenance on their own car and the whole car ownership experience. Um, but the one thing I will reiterate from the last video is just that, again, this is not like a DIY instructional video. It's really just sort of like a ride along with me doing this for the first time and pointing out things that I think that other first timers might need to know or just some noteworthy things. Hopefully it'll be easier than the brake pads, even though the brake pads weren't difficult, but you know, hopefully there'll be less hiccups than with the brake pads. Okay, a couple of things that I'm gonna use to change the brake fluid. So I have a power bleeder kit and the bottles to go with it, modal 600 brake fluid, turkey baster. So that to remove the fluid out of the reservoir, have a 10 mil socket to loosen up the bolts that for the, for the plastic shroud over top the reservoir, a 11 millimeter wrench for the bleeder valves. This you don't really need. This just, uh, I have a pry tool kit that this came with and, and this is good for removing that fastener that holds that plastic piece over the um, brake fluid reservoir in place. So we use that. A 17 mil socket with the protective coating for the lug nuts. And finally, some nitrate gloves because brake fluid is pretty nasty. Uh, as usual, I will link everything in the description below. All right, so to start, I have to remove this. I just did with this same tool for using to remove the fastener for the plastic shroud. So this thing really is pretty handy. I don't know if this is the best thing to use to remove this, but you do have to remove this filter. All right, so this is what I was able to get out. Not a whole lot, but at least enough to not go through the brake lines. All right, so next I'm gonna do a pressure test to make sure that this thing actually does hold the pressure in here. Okay, so I pumped this up to about 12. <clears throat> so I'm just in here making sure that this needle doesn't move. Hopefully the connection is good and there's no leak. Uh, just a heads up that you pump it like a whole bunch of times and it'll kind of feel like it's not really going anywhere, but it just takes a lot to get it past 10. Trying this again after tightening up this connection a little bit more with some pliers. I think that looks good. No movement at all. All right, so I got some shop towels here because I just assumed that I'm gonna make a mess. So, from what I've read, I have to fill one and somewhere between uh, two thirds and a quarter bottles in here and to save the rest to top off the tank. Um, kind of hard to see, but it was probably to like here-ish, if I had to guess. So what that looks like in this bottle, if you have it, is it looks like it's filled up to just above the power bleeder wording here. Okay, so before I start pressurizing this, and I'm going to get this to about 15 PSI, uh, I'm going to go take the bottle and attach this to the rear passenger side bleeder valve. Not gonna get it on or not gonna like open it up, just get it in place so that this doesn't have to sit pressurized for any longer than it has to. Okay, so I have the rear passenger side bleeder valve off, have the bottle hose attached to it with the 11 millimeter uh, closed side of the wrench already kind of hooked in place. So now I'm gonna pump this up to 15 PSI and then we will open the valve and start the brake fluid change process. Okay, so this is right at 15. And I'll periodically come back and check and make sure that it's still there. All right, here we go. This is starting to come through. So I, as I understand it, I'm gonna wait until we see the no bubbles, which there are a ton of right now. So we're gonna wait until this is free flowing, the right color, by right color, I mean the same color as the uh, brake fluid that we put in, and that there are no air bubbles. Now, 
apparently this process does take a little while. You can still see some air bubbles in the tubing here. So we're gonna wait until that is like a steady stream of this sort of, I don't know, what color is this? Maybe like a very light yellow. Well, this color looks pretty good, but the bottle's almost filled up. Did not anticipate that much fluid coming out here. So, uh, but I still see some bubbles coming through here. Actually, now it's pretty solid. That might have been the last of it, hopefully. About the halfway point, got the rear passenger and driver's side done. Rear driver's side, this was the result of that, which is way more than I thought was gonna come out of it, so I'm not even sure if that's right. Um, but this was the rear driver's side, not as much, uh, but you can definitely tell the darkness of the fluid that came out as opposed to what was going in. Um, the rear passenger side, I felt like it took forever for there to be no bubbles, but for the rear driver side, actually it was pretty smooth pretty quickly. Still at 15, pressure's holding pretty good. I did notice a very small leak, and by leak I mean like a couple of drops up here. So I have a shop towel wrapped around that, um, just uh, keeping an eye on that. But again, the pressure and everything looks good. So now I'm gonna continue on to the passenger front. All right, small snag. I was doing the second bleeder valve of the front passenger side. Uh, when all of a sudden there was like a lot of like rushed air and, and what seemed like there might have been a leak somewhere, but there wasn't. Um, everything was still tight, it was out of fluid. If I had to guess, I overbled the first set of brakes, the rear passenger side. Um, again, it just took forever for like the air bubbles to come out, so um, I probably just overdid it. Uh, but I did manage to find a store that was reasonably close uh, that had some more of the same fluid that I'm using, so I went pick up some more. I should only need one bottle, but I bought two just in case. Uh, so I'm going to refill this, finish this side, do the front driver side, and then we're done. All right, home stretch, last two valves. All right, the wood's running clear. Bubbles are just about gone. Looks good. Okay, so everything is done. Uh, I've already let the pressure out of this. So now I just need to unhook that, put the basket back in. Um, then I'm going to top up the reservoir, seal that up and hopefully make sure this thing has brakes. Okay, so before I put the shroud back on and button everything up, let's hit the brake pedal a couple of times and make sure that it's solid. All right, shroud's back on, everything is done. Let's at least make sure that the brakes really work, at least on the road, quick road test. Okay, so the last step, yes, I have to replace my key fob battery. The last step is to reset the message for the brake fluid letting it know it's been changed. So, let's see if I remember how to do this. Press and hold this button. There we go. Reset possible. Yes. Nope. Didn't mean to do that. Ooh, I should reset brake pads too. Alright, reset fluid. Yes. Reset in progress. Done. Alright, let's see brake pads too. Alright. Good to go. Okay, so brake fluid. Not the hardest thing in the world to do, although I think that the brake pads were probably a little bit easier. Um, if anything, just the brake fluid was just a little bit more of a hassle because brake fluid is just a nasty fluid to deal with. And uh, anytime you're dealing with anything with fluid, I think there's just, it just be a little bit messier. And uh, again, I think the brake pads were just overall easier to do, if not just a little bit tedious. So here are some mistakes that I made. So number one, over bleeding the brakes. Uh, the, the furthest point from the master cylinder, the rear passenger side where you start, I feel like I was, um, it was, I feel like it was taking forever for the bubbles to clear. Maybe they were being introduced from the power bleeder. Um, I don't know if maybe there was like just the angle of the hose or something like that. But before I knew it, the bottle was almost full before it seemed to be like a consistent flow of brake fluid. So of course that resulted in me not having enough brake fluid from the two bottles to do the entire car. Had to go out and buy more. And luckily there was a place not far away that had it. So when it comes to, uh, having overbled the brakes, how I knew I was pretty much out of brake fluid is that when I was doing the second leader valve on the front passenger side, all of a sudden there was just like this very heavy kind of like force of air and like this kind of sputtering coming through. And that was pretty much the bleeder, the, the power bleeder being empty. So if you notice that, that's what's happening. Number two, 
Um, the hose that comes with the bottle that you attach to the bleeder valve. Um, when I was pinching to like pinching the, the tubing to pull it off of the bleeder valve, I think it was probably pinching a little bit too hard. So by the time I got to the very last valve, the driver side front on the inside, there was a little tear on the edge of the hose, maybe like a fraction of an inch in. And of course, when I went to go open the valve, brake fluid leaked everywhere. That's a pain. So if you have any kind of little tears or any little, you know, whatever, just pay attention to your hose. And in my case, all I ended up doing was just cutting that little piece off so that it was, you know, solid tubing again. Number three, so speaking of leaks, um, the connection between where the power bleeder connects to the hose that goes to the brake fluid uh, reservoir, had a little bit of leaking there, even though it was very tight and the PSI and the power bleeder was pretty consistent. Um, still maybe put down a couple of shop towels or something like that just to make sure. It wasn't like a full on leak, but still there was a little bit of fluid loss there. So just a heads up on that. And the last mistake, the biggest mistake made, forgot to torque down my bolts before going for a test drive. Yep, I don't know what happened. I was just kind of not rushing to get stuff done, but I was looking to get stuff done. I was looking to wrap stuff up. Wanted to go for a quick drive just to make sure that the brakes felt good, that they didn't feel mushy. I was a little concerned about air in the brake line, especially after you know doing that that first um, one in the back where it's, it felt like there was a never-ending flow of air bubbles. Um, and I got outside my neighborhood and realized I forgot to torque down the bolts. So panic call to my wife who brought my torque wrench, and then I'm on the side of the road retorquing. So whatever, man. Mistakes were made. Luckily, it wasn't disastrous, but uh, oof. So. I hope you found this helpful. I hope you never forget to torque down your bolts before going for a test drive. Um, and I, I think I covered everything, but just in case, always double check the description or a pinned comment if I leave one, because anything I forget to say, I will put there. And as usual, all products and tools that I used for this, I will link in the description below also. So uh, again, hope you found this helpful and I will catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching.